Hey everybody, welcome back to Lightwave. This is tutorial number six. One through five have been sort of giving you a superficial dusting of how everything in Modeler works uh, on a very general basis, enough to make you dangerous in how to figure out how to use tools in Lightwave, but not actually going through tool by tool and showing you everything. Uh, and this is the last video like that. Uh, we have one last major piece of Modeler to talk about before we go back through Modeler again at higher res and I start talking about the really the really uh, cool nitty-gritty tools and the stuff that you can use to make rather complex objects rather quickly. Um, we're not there yet. One last piece that we have to talk about. Uh, but with what we've already learned, uh, we just did that thing with the TARDIS and all that, and uh, I'm on a podcast called Down in Front, which I recommend. It's, it's quite good, downinfront.net. Uh, but I posted this tutorial series as like a project in our forum community, and uh, people have been taken to it. You can get a 60-day free trial of Lightwave. They've done that and started throwing together pieces of... Uh, of Lightwave art already, which is really cool. Um, this one right here is colored. That's Owen, damn it, getting ahead of us, Googling and learning things for himself. Damn that man. Uh, no, I commend him for this. Uh, we're going to get into conversations about how he made this colored right now, but I just wanted to point out that I'm really pleased and proud and flattered that people are taking to these things and, uh, and actually making some cool stuff with them already. The uh, Pikachu that he made is colored. Derpachu, really. Uh, how do you do that? Well, let's make something real quick. We're going to make a box here. Let's go ahead and go into wireframe shape. I'm going to divide it into thirds. Uh, we're going to make a Rubik's cube. How about that? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and let's see. Select all these polys. Put B for bevel. And give them one of these. Yeah, bitch. Uh, Rubik's cube. Hooray. Um, if I wanted to make this a Rubik's Cube, I would have to actually start dividing it up into colors, because, you know, it's a Rubik's Cube. And the way you do that is by altering the surfaces. Now, surface is the collection of characteristics applied to a polygon. You can't apply it to a point or an edge, because remember, they don't actually exist. They're just points of coordinate data. Polygons are the things that get seen. And when you get over into layout and start rendering your shots, you're going to actually get a really specific... Uh, result based on what your, your surface looks like, and you can tweak it endlessly in layout to make it look exactly the way you want to. You know, a billiards ball, you'd build a sphere, and you'd just sort of set it up, you know, with whatever surface. But over in layout, that's when you actually get into the nitty-gritty of making it glossy and burgundy and putting the number on it. Or you build a sidewalk, and then layout, you select that surface, and you make that surface look like concrete, that kind of thing. That's what surfaces are for. Uh, and you have the ability to deal with surfaces in Modeler, even though you don't have the ability to see them, you know, ray trace rendered. Uh, all you have is the OpenGL, kind of crappy computer drawing language, but you need to be able to use them in Modeler because in Modeler is where you're going to set them up and define which polygons are which surface um, because in layout you don't actually have the ability to deal with objects on that level. You can alter the surfaces that are there, but you can't add any. That's why the surface editor is in Modeler. So let's go ahead and uh, start. I, I have a Ruby Cube here somewhere. I think I know the proper colors, but I don't know which ones are like the opposite sides and all that. Sorry. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, we're going to just select these top guys here, all these top facing polys. And you know, it actually would be the smart thing for me just to go in the top view and just select everything I can see because you know, then yeah, that's better. I want to get these side bevels too because we are, we're lightwave artists, damn it, we're paying attention. Okay, so I'm selecting all of the polys that I want to apply a surface to. Now bear in mind, in lightwave, if nothing is selected, everything is selected. So if I didn't select these polys, I'd be changing the surface of the whole box at once, and it'd be madness. Cats and dogs, you know, mass hysteria. So once I have my polygon selected that I want to apply a surface to, I hit Q. Q has some basic parameters that I can set up right now. We're going to make this the red face. I'm going to type in red for the name. We're going to make it a red color. Uh, and I have, you know, initial qualities of the fuse and spec, whether or not it's smooth and things like that. I don't need to fiddle with these too much. You can, but you have the ability to tweak them endlessly in the surface editor. This is just building the surface in the first place. So, you know, I generally name the surface and pick an initial color, but that's about it. Hit OK. And now, hey, look, I missed some polys. You and you. Thank you. Uh, I've made them red, which is fantastic. God damn, I missed all these polys. Look at me. I suck. Red. Damn it. All right, there we go. Quite cool. Now, in the surface editor, or F5, we have my new red um, surface. In addition to ring, which incidentally is the name of the default gray surface that this box opened with, 
I was using a surface called ring in a previous model and it just carried over. It usually would be called default. If I had started modeler from, if I had opened the program, it would be default, not ring. Uh, in fact, let's just say it's default because it is. Okay. Uh, this is the surface editor. Right here we have unnamed, which is the name of our Ruby's Hue. Uh, over here it says unnamed. If you had multiple objects open at once, you would be able to click on this and there'd be a list of all the other objects and you can switch back and forth between them and copy and paste between them and all of that. And when there's multiple objects open, you have multiple things over here in the surface editor with drop downs. And you can, you know, you know, take the surface from one and paste them on the other and all that stuff. It's, it's handy. Uh, but we usually are just going to be dealing with the one that we're actually looking at. So unnamed. We have the surface that is made, which is red, and has those qualities that I put into it. And uh, default, which is nothing. It's absolute default quality surface. Now, over here on the right, we have load and save. You know, save is once I've made a, a surface that I really like, like I want to use that over and over again on other objects too, not just internally on this one. Uh, I can save that as like a preset and then load it as a preset. Um, but you don't need to do that unless you're trying to port over a surface from something you made a long time ago. Because when you save this object, it will save the surfaces, it'll save you know whatever images are associated with the textures, it'll save everything. So you only need to use save when you are making something that's like, oh damn, I'm gonna use this all the time. Like I just made the perfect metal texture and I wanna use it all the time or whatever. And rename just allows you to rename the surface that you're talking about. Our existing surfaces are red and default. They both appear over here. We got um, four tabs. Basic is all the attributes that we're gonna be talking about right now. Uh, and basic is the one that you spend almost all of your time dealing with. Advanced is, is things for doing like just rendering the wireframe, but not the actual object and stuff like that. Environment is where you set up your reflection options and shaders is where there's presets for you know, shaders. Interesting existing um, combinations of weird spec and edge qualities and stuff like that. We're not talking about that right now, just basic. Um, the node editor right here, edit nodes and this checkbox um, are a completely discrete whole way of texturing in Lightweight. Um, everything that you see here is also contained in edit nodes, but we're not going to talk about edit nodes in this video uh, because let's let's understand the basics first. And nodes, some people you know know how to work in nodes and some don't, but you have to learn how to use them, and it's a it's a whole ordeal. Let's not talk about the node editor right now. But we have the uh, these qualities here, and we're going to talk more about them in layout because most of them are only going to be visible in layout. Like I said, Modeler doesn't have an extreme capacity for showing you the realistic thing, uh, the realistic version of what you've done so far. It just shows you the OpenGL, you know, graphics card version of it. Uh, it doesn't ray trace and, and show you everything, the shadows and all that. So it's not actually useful for minute tweaks in Modeler. It's only useful for setting up surfaces because you can't set up surfaces in layout. You can tweak the surfaces that exist all day long, but you need to be in Modeler to actually deal with the polygons and, and say, these are this, those are that. Uh, and I can add as many uh, surfaces as I want. In fact, what I'm going to do now, here's a cool trick. I'm just going to select the squares. There is, of all the selection tools I showed you, I, I didn't show you a grow selection, or at least I don't think I did. Um, but if you select something and then shift into bracket, it just grows that selection outward. Cool, huh? So instead of having to actually go through and select all those bevels by hand, I can just put these guys and shift into bracket. Q, uh, let's make this, I'm pretty sure red borders, I know it borders white. Sorry, I'm also kind of a Ruby's cube nerd. Um, okay, boom, and there's that. Default is screw everything here. Let's make default black so it's easier to distinguish. Uh, I think green would go right here. Again, I'm if you are like me, a Rubik's Cube enthusiast, I might be getting the colors wrong, and I'm sorry, my brother. But here we go. Let's make this guy green, and you get the idea, right? Blink, blink, and I can go through. And uh, I think orange is on this side. All I'm doing is. Uh, going through and setting up what I know I'm going to need later. This is all um, in the service of building the surfaces that you know you're going to need later uh, so that when you're in layout down the road, uh, you can actually, you know, you don't have to go back into Modeler and go, oh, damn, I forgot to make this. I need to make that now. Uh, you've built it all in advance knowing that, you know, in this case, I'm going to at least need six surfaces that are the colors of a Rubik's Cube. Yellow. Do, 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 do. Boink. And you get the idea. I 
think I've actually got this exactly right. I might be wrong. I'm sure I'm wrong. Hold on here. Q. Make this guy blue. And like I said, you don't actually have to spend too much time focusing with the initial stuff you set up in there because you can go back into all of these and just you know edit the color later. We're going to have a conversation that's much more interesting about the way texturing works, uh, which is a whole a whole part of this process. That's where you go from having a sphere to having a billiard ball. Um, surfaces are just something that we have to talk about first because you apply textures to surfaces and you apply surfaces to polys. But now you know how to apply surfaces to your polygons and how to interact with the surface editor. Is there a smart way that I could go through and make the, the you know, the divots black? I think there is. Yeah, let's try this. Um, now I'm winging it. You know, I, I prepared this tutorial, but now I'm winging it. Uh, we're going to go into top view, wireframe. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can select. Bam. All right. I'm just going to select the squares. There's almost certainly a smarter way to do this that I'm not thinking of right now. But right now in wireframe, uh, I'm actually selecting the squares uh, on the top and the bottom right now. Because in wireframe mode, your selections, this is different from sh everything else. Uh, shaded mode doesn't work like this. In wireframe mode, if you can see through it, that means you can select through it. See, now you can tell in the different view that I've actually selected both of them. Um, but what I'm going to do here is get all of my, I'm just going to do this, uh, get all of my boxes selected here. Once you have a selection, uh, letting go of shift and clicking around will um, deselect them. So I'm just going to shift and click drag. Cool. Now lose those. Bam. And lose those, just clicking on them, lose these, lose those, sweet. Okay, so what I've done here is select every square on the Rubik's Cube, and I'm going to go into Selection, Invert. Boom. And now I've just selected, you know, the divots. Let's go ahead and call those divots. Make them black. Aha, now we're really looking good. Ready to do motion graphics for VH1 over here. You know what? I think I nailed it. I think that's exactly the way the Rubik's Cube is laid out. So this has been a success for everyone today. Anyway, but that's how the service editor works, and that's the last major constituent part of Modeler uh, before we go back through and talk about things really in depth. So see you guys in the next video.